Some time ago, I was asked to recreate the baseline from Labs of Reason Go Away track. Unlike the Protosa, I don't have fancy analog gear, so I did my best in serum. How did it end up? Just listen. <laughs> What's up? Welcome to my third EBM sound design tutorial. Today we will make the bass you have heard in the intro. The sound I created seems to be easy, but as you will see later, we will use lots of effects to shape the sound. If you want to learn more advanced sound design, then this video is for you, so keep watching. Let's go to Ableton and start working. I assumed the original bass was made with an analog synthesizer, so I decided to use basic wavetables. The oscillator A is loaded with the basic MG wavetable, which I adjusted to get a combination of a square and sort of wave. Here is the melody, and here is the initial sound. It's basic at this moment, so I will add the oscillator B. Here I throw a plain sort of wave. To add some movement, let's detune the oscillator B. We can also use a bit of warping. At this moment, the sync warping will not give a huge difference, but it can be used to shape the sound further after we add all the effects and distortion. To give the bass a different flavor, I added the sub oscillator with a characteristic sound of a square wave. Because the original bass line doesn't have lots of low end, I used a high pass filter on all oscillators. I cranked up the drive knob, which will louden the bass, before feeding it into distortion. If you pass a quiet sound through the serum distortion, you may have a hard time adjusting it. Notice the first envelope shape, which by default controls the synthesizer volume. We will also use this envelope for another modulation, which I will show you soon. The first part of this video ends here. If you are new to this channel, my name is Marcin. I am a musician for 10 years, I sell Udemy courses, give one-on-one -on -one music production lessons, and post here a new tutorial every second Sunday. If you like this video so far, consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. In Serum, I added a few effects, starting with the hyper dimension. Our baseline is harsh and dry. This effect will give the sound some space. It has to be transparent, so don't set the mix knobs high, and watch out for the modulation rate and amount. The next effect is a flanger. In the original baseline, at first sight, you might think there isn't any flanger or phaser present, but if you listen closely, you will hear some modulation happening on the sides. The flanger will mimic this modulation. It's useful to set the rate in tempo-based units to create an extra rhythm. A 
a subtle reverb can fill the sound even more. The mix knob is set low. All the remaining settings are not that important, but it would be good to remove low frequencies from the reverb. It will keep the low end tight. After all these spatial effects, we can use some distortion. The Seinfeld algorithm is aggressive, so I used just a little bit of drive. If we wouldn't raise the bass volume and the filter with the drive knob, this distortion would make no sense. But because we did it, the distortion will enhance the high end. The last effect is the low pass filter. Its cut off frequency is modulated with the first envelope. After the serum, I use the isotope thrash tool for more distortion. The wizard preset will add crunch to the sound, bringing it closer to the original baseline. Later, I used the second filter section for equalization. All three bands have a different role. The high pass filter will cut again the low frequencies, making the sound light. The bell filter with lots of attenuation cuts the annoying resonance in the bass. The high shelf filter will cut some high end to make the sound closer to the original bass line. In the end, I used a chorus in very small amounts. It's like a cherry on top of the spatial effects cake. We cut the low end in previous sections, so you might be confused why we are now adding low frequencies. The reason is simple. The original baseline sounds light, meaning that we want to remove frequencies from around 200 Hz downwards. But in electronic music, we should have some low end, right? For that, you can use either a fat kick drum, which is present in the original track, or you can layer this baseline with a pure sine wave. A single sub-frequency is enough for appropriate low end without all these low mid frequencies we cut before. Let's add the sine wave to our bass. As you can see, the sine wave is on the second channel. These two channels together make the whole bass. In the third channel, I threw an atmospheric pad you have heard in the intro. How I made it? I rendered my bass, used the ball stretch to transform it into the pad and used two filters. If you want to know more about the ball stretch, watch my another tutorial in which I show you how to use this tool. I will play the whole project in a while. This tutorial ends right here. And as always, if you like this tutorial, give this video a thumbs up. You can use the comments section to suggest me another tutorial. If you don't want to miss my next upload, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, see you next time.